Welcome to our 2024 Mexican Grand Prix predictions reaction and race reaction itself. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> and I ruined it once again. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I ruined the intro once again, and I'm joined by uh, Cap Ajax. <laughs> Indeed, indeed, it was exciting for a uh, for Mexican Grand Prix. It was very good uh, because obviously it's not the greatest track on the calendar, but it kind of delivered this. Yep, it it delivered this time this year at least. Uh, not quite expecting anything that uh, something else to happen next year or any. Basically, I don't expect anything from this track. So anything better than super boring race is already very good. And this one, it wasn't like the best race ever, but it was pretty good. It was it was something to look at. Uh, you always had something to look at during the Grand Prix, something to keep in mind. And yeah, it was already from the start. It was it was hectic. Yeah, uh, the entire weekend. <sighs> Qualifying was fine, race was fine, practices not much. I mean, practice one was... We had a crash with Albon and Behrman, we had a lot of rookies in, so it wasn't very representative in terms of pace. But yeah, uh, the rookies, there's there was there were so many names that I can remember all of them. I think it was, uh, was Behrman, it was Antonelli, it was... Uh, and that's pretty much... Uh, I think O'Ward, Battle O'Ward, I think, that's the... The other Mexican in the in practice one, um, and uh, I don't know if you remember any more names. I I, I clearly don't. <laughs> Drogovic, Drogovic, Felipe Drogovic. Okay, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, other uh, yeah, okay, that's practice one. Uh, nothing much to say there, uh, unless you want to talk about the crash. But yeah, Albin just pushing too much in practice one. Collecting Berman with himself. I don't think there's much to talk about there. That's an unfortunate, unfortunate incident. Yeah. Yeah, Berman definitely not, and Albin was just unlucky pushing too much in practice one for no reason, but yeah, it's just unfortunate. Uh, practice two was even less uh, representative because we had the test tires for one and a half hours. Actually, stayed up late for the entire practice session, but I fell asleep in the last 20 minutes, so I actually don't know what, if anything happened there. I just woke up like 10, min 10 minutes after the practice ended. Uh, I was like, I was so, <laughs> so confused, like, where, where, where am I? What day is it? And so on. Yeah, practice two was very boring, but that's what testing does to Formula One. Um, Practice free though was uh, pretty interesting. We had a very close grid and this was looking pretty good for qualifying. So let's get to that. Um, starting with Q1, we already have two, uh, well, at least one big exit. Um, obviously, uh, Oscar Piastri getting knocked out in Q1. Alongside Checo Perez, but that's, I mean, Perez getting knocked out in Q1 is not even a surprise at this point. It's happening like every second weekend. Unfortunately, it's potentially uh, his last home race well not potentially probably uh confirmed at this point uh in the in the in the sidelines or in the in the background basically um as it's very likely that it's going to be brazil is going to be the last race of Perez's career perhaps um so yeah having having such a i don't want to call it like there's not no I don't know how to explain it at this point. It's just average Perez weekend, but during his home race, I think that was the one weekend we had. He had to turn up, and he didn't. He did the opposite, um, <laughs> which kind of plays into your cards. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, okay. I think <laughs> I think Piastri is the important exit. Uh, him not being able to get into well into the top five. Uh, Next to the Ferraris and Max, I think didn't help Lando at all, especially coming to the race. They had very limited strategy option. They didn't have the second car there, and Piastri just couldn't capitalize on, especially Max having a bad weekend, well, at least a not bad weekend, bad Grand Prix, because qualifying, I think that was an amazing qualifying for Max. But in the race, 
Max is just P6 and still finishes out of Piastri. I think that's the that's the issue there. Piastri not helping uh, Norris that much. Uh, I wouldn't call P8 a front. It's, uh, I mean, he still finished. He still finished behind Magnussen. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, sprint spring qualifying, yeah. Yep, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a big talking point, obviously. Uh, but we're still in qualifying. Uh, let's let's move to Q two, where we have well, not nothing much happened. It was a very regular session with just a crash in the end from Yuki Tsunoda. Um, goodbye, most impressive driver. It was looking pretty good at that point. Uh, Tsunoda, I think, finished P three in uh, practice one and practice two. I was. Very happy with that, but qualifying didn't quite uh, go to his plan. Um, unfortunately for Yuki, still at qualified Al Lawson thanks to this that crash. Also, I think uh, Alonso uh, was was the victim of the yellow flag as well. Just uh, yeah, unfortunate, but a regular regular uh, results I would say for Q two. Um, we had the teams where they should be at a point. Q3 though, uh, we had some interesting names there, obviously both Hasses once again, uh, Magnussen and Hulkenberg actually, um, it's uh, important to mention I think, um, Alban had a good qualifying, I think P8 if I remember correctly, uh, so a good uh, bounce back from Austin, at least in qualifying obviously, <laughs> and uh, the last, uh, last driver in Q3 was... I want to say Gasly. Uh, yeah, well, it was Gasly. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's the lower half of the Q3. But the main topic, obviously, in the Q3 is the top. And who is on top? It's Carlos Sainz. Wow, uh, what a pole position! And just immense, uh, immensely quick in the entire weekend uh, qualifying, especially. I mean, putting three tenths on Charles Leclerc um, in the regular qualifying conditions is just. Very, a very good performance, just exceptional from Sainz, and I'm happy he did it because uh, he reminded everyone that he's going to Williams next year. <laughs> uh, this drive is going to be in Williams next year, and it's it's a shame because honestly, it should be in Red Bull already, probably in 2025. Uh, I, I don't think I don't think there's a reason for that to not happen other than Red Bull politics, but. Yeah, we went over that a couple of times already this year. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, P2, uh, also a great lap from Max, um, improved on his run. Uh, he, he got one lap time lead during Q3, and on the second run went even faster by a couple of tenths. So, qualifying ahead of a Ferrari. Uh, the other stood in pole position and ahead of Lando, obviously, the most important thing well, out qualifying Lando Norris. Uh, he did that, he did the job on, on Saturday. Um, you know what? Uh, when it comes to Max Verstappen, I think his starts allow him to start from any position and get to get the P one in Mexico, especially. I think, I think like seven out of like ten Mexican Grand Prix that Max has raced in, he led after lap one uh, or turn one, I should say. Uh, just he he has he has a turn one like in, in his back of his head. It's, it's just automatically getting in the first place somehow from every single position or every single move. 
But I'm moving uh, 2021, I'm moving he overtook both Mercedes are on the outside, or uh, even last year he overtook Charles into turn one on the inside. Him obviously Perez um, flying into the air <laughs> that time. Um, he did something similar this year to Sainz. Uh, obviously, Sainz kept the, kept it around the outside, but um, it was far stopped. But that's already coming to the race. I was still in qualifying, right? <laughs> uh, um, B3, Lana Norris, not the greatest qualifying we, he would have hoped for, but top three is still right, uh, considering his teammate was out in Q1. P4, Charles, not his greatest qualifying, and then we had the Mercedes cars, um, George ahead of Hamilton. In, I would say, in their own league, like uh, clear of ha the Hasses and behind the everyone else. So Mercedes is just there. Yeah. To be fair, Mercedes is also uh, quite Mercedes. <laughs> okay. Uh... Okay, we, I think we get to the race because that's the main topic. Uh, it was an eventful race. There's quite a few talking points, but I think the main one is obviously... Uh, well, we, we will cover the start uh, that I already started to cover before. Uh, Max got ahead of Sainz pushing on the track, but we had the huge crash behind the Yuki. Tried to get around the outside of Alban. Unfortunately, Gasly moved to the left, so they all collided and uh yuki straight up into the barrier nearly missing out a cameraman i think on his way to uh well to the back barrier <laughs> he was sliding over the barrier on the side until the end uh it was a uh, not the greatest crash to have but i mean i yeah just just unfortunate it was no one was deemed responsible for it obviously uh, so I think that's that's that was the correct decision. I don't think Alban had, uh, had was at fault there. Neither was Yuki, and Gasly was just I think maybe avoiding someone else. He just didn't know that Yuki would come around the outside. So yeah, just unfortunate incident. Alban right later on, well later on, a few turns later, uh, the end up on his own with a puncture and a broken suspension on the front left. Um, that studio is already on lap one, but none from the engine failure. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the start. But obviously, we get the red flag, um, so there's nothing much there at the start, especially. Except I, I want to mention Perez because I think he got a false start, right? Uh, he overshoot his uh, grid box by like a meter <laughs> and gain like six positions at the start thanks to that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I. I I was, I was, it was, th those radio messages were funny, I, I, I gotta admit, like, I, like, they were telling him you got a penalty for a false start, I know, it was a great, great start from Bryce, like, a, it's, that's so, that's so ridiculously funny, but also, like, kind of sad, because, I mean, yeah, you, you got a penalty for starting wrongly, but it's also, uh, just, just, yeah, silly, silly, and very Perez-like, um, yeah, uh, Perez weekend already being in the in the bin, so that penalty at the start didn't really affect much, honestly. Um, but the fact that his race was uh, later on, but uh, I think we we need to mention the big thing uh, that had happened after the red flag restart. Uh, sorry, this safety car restart. Obviously, we had Max. Gaining the the time um, at the end of the safety car, obviously he's not getting overtaken into turn one that time. But the lap later, I think it was lap later, right? Uh, Carlos Sainz sends one absolutely amazing dive bomb to the inside, gets Max, and just wow! Uh, I was, I was, I I haven't seen such a great overtake on Max Verstappen specifically in such a such a I think I think Lewis Hamilton was probably, or maybe Charles in 2022 was where the last time I I saw Max getting overtaken like that, like cleanly, precisely, and just very very skillfully. Uh, very good from Sainz. He got a pole position, got that race lead, 
uh, on merit and later on won the Grand Prix, obviously. But yeah, uh, after Sainz overtook Max, uh, we get to turn four. Lando is in the slipstream of Max thanks to um, thanks to Sainz uh, compromising Max's line uh, from turn three. Lando tries to go around the outside, and Max does the usual Max or step in the thing, pushes him off to the grass. Lando rejoins uh, ahead of ahead of Max, I think. Uh, but get to turn eight also. Very similar thing happens, but this time it's Max overtaking Lando, but it wasn't much of an overtake, it was it? Uh, um, it was it was very desperate and very like in, in retrospect it was stupid, um, but also smart on the on uh, in the context of the championship fight. But that's also a talk talking point. And yeah, I, I quickly wanted to get over this so I can hear your thoughts uh, in more deep manner. Exactly. Like. Saudi. Saudi. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Fine. You know, this, this is what he does, and I think the penalty on him, and they discussed it in Austria. Apparently, the drivers changed the rules. One driver. Yeah, he kind of did. Yeah, maybe. To be fair, uh, I think he maybe should have uh, been challenged by George Russell. And uh, yeah, I know what you're uh, we're gonna say. Like Hamilton finished ahead of him, but Russell. Russell was put into traffic, but maybe if Max was ahead of him, he would pit at a different time and not get that, not get the front wing destroyed. By sabotaging Lando, essentially. Uh, I think eleven or. Uh, yeah. Actually, it, it was 10 because Lando didn't get the fastest lap. Uh, Charles got it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, Senna, Senna crashed into someone to win a championship, so yeah. <laughs> to be fair, Rothberg did similar things, uh, well, yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, no champion, yeah, no champion is, is super innocent, like, I think, I think every champion had to do some, some of these things that are over the line, over the, over the line of the rules, uh, to win the championships, because when you win a fighting about a championship, you have to extract every single thing that there is uh, for your advantage, so, yeah, Max tried to do that again, what he did in uh, Austin, but this time the stewards were having none of it. And I think I think the first incident in turn four, it was pretty much a copy paste of incident of uh, of the Austin one. And uh, I forgot which turn was that, but yeah, uh, pretty much the same incident. But this time Lando actually wasn't penalized, and it, instead it was Max. But it was such a I don't know, like, at this point. <laughs> wow. It's such a similar incident, but one driver is not affected this time, and the other is just weird. I think it, maybe a five-second penalty could be okay, but I want some consistency, because we didn't have it in Austin. And for the, for the other incident, like, Max going around the inside, pushing Lando off to Charles, basically overtook them both. I think that one was deserved, fully deserved. I think that was just reckless driving dangerous even because uh, Lando I mean if he would have even would have turned normally he would pretty much crash and lose the championship at that point already um he just yeah deserved for Max to get these penalties so he actually has to rethink his uh wheel to wheel um approach for the rest of the season at least um unless they change it again because I mean FIA F- 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 is very inconsistent uh, 47 now, after his race. Uh, yeah, he's not gonna lose the championship, but... I mean, yeah. Uh, okay, that, that's the incident, the, the big one, the big talking point. Uh, obviously, we had the Mercedes scrapping a lot, uh, Mercedes and... Uh, well, sorry, <laughs> George and, and Lewis were battling a lot uh, during the early phase of the Grand Prix. Obviously, then uh, with George having the damage uh, later on, the battle resumed and uh, Hamilton overtook him after a few attempts. Um, but George put up a very good defensive drive. Both drivers were very respectful. I think yeah. their their wheel to wheel fight was the example that all the other drivers should have. We're fighting uh, is the literal polar opposite to Max because Max is not giving anyone a room, and uh, that fight was so respectful, like between teammates who also respect each other. Because I believe that's that's the thing, Mercedes. I don't think they're in the same situation as they were in 2022, for example. Um, yeah, uh, another another incident. I mean, they were penalized by the by the Perez incidents, uh, the one with Lawson. I think that was just stupid driving for both of them. I don't think that was that was just, yeah, that was the exact like you're having a a fight between the Mercedes cars and on the opposite end you're having the Perez Lawson fight. They, those are the pol- polar opposite incidents. Like one fair fair racing and the other one was just pushing on the track crashing into each other i didn't really even like that fight i think both of them were just uh yeah both are screwed up yeah Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Perez. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like Perez is not a bad driver. He definitely has it in him. He obviously has a very long career and had many highlights over the years. He just that when he really came to Red Bull against Max, he I I don't quite think that car ever suited him to to begin with. Maybe at the start of 2022 or even at 2023 at the start, but uh, ever ever since Max got the uh, comfortable in the car. Perez couldn't challenge him, and it's unfortunately uh, what happens to Max's teammates. And Perez, I mean, he showed throughout his career that he can compete with anyone. Um, he outscored Hulkenberg over the three years they were together. He beat Ocon, uh, who also is a very highly highly rated driver, I would say. And yeah, I just I think. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, although I agree that Bottas is the better driver, and and when you compare that, he he could match or even beat Lewis Hamilton like every fourth Grand Prix weekend, and that was against prime Lewis Hamilton, the stati statistically the greatest of all time. I think. But that should be definitely respect more uh, that ridiculous stat of having 100% Q3 rate in his entire Mercedes career. I think I think Bottas should be respected way more as a driver, and I'm, I would I'll be I would be very sad if he actually gets dropped after this year because I, I think he's still driving at a very high level. He himself said that he's driving the best he ever ha he ever have, uh, but he cannot show that in a Sauber next to Joe. It's the uh, I mean, you, there, there's no benchmark there because it's, it's Joe and the car is just so slow that he cannot be up there. Very unfortunate for Bottas, but yeah. Um, uh, okay, the other incident with Perez and Stroll, I think that was the exact same as, as Max with Lando. I don't I, I don't know why uh, why Perez didn't get a penalty there, but whatever. Stewards, it's FIA. I cannot expect them to be consistent even in the one race. <laughs> uh... Okay, um, yeah, yeah, then we had uh, Alonso DNF, which I mean, now I'm so mad at myself that I haven't put a mechanical failure instead of an engine failure in the Grand Prix because I would get the points for Alonso, but I went specific. No, I'm actually so specific. Oh, damn it. Yeah, uh, unfortunately for me, but yeah, Alonso retiring on his 400th Grand Prix weekend also. Yep, it's it's iconic uh, when it comes to Alonso's career. I think uh, it, it resembles his career pretty well. Uh, um, DNF at his 400th race, it's, yeah, he pretty much DNFs in like every fourth Grand Prix and he ever raced in. Um, I believe so. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, the stats may be even worse. I think he definitely has over twenty five percent retirement rate or something like that. It's just ridiculous bad luck, but unfortunate for Alonso. But he's in an Aston Martin. He can't expect anything else. He signed, re signed with them for twenty five six, and that's the year they're aiming for uh, with Honda. Yeah, he, he new E Honda. Uh, I think. A new team principle coming in as well. Um, 
think they're signing a lot of people from Red Bull and over the place just it's gonna be good for Aston. Uh anyways, uh Okay, uh, we mentioned uh, all the incidents, I think, for, for the Grand Prix. Um, I think we missed any. Um, maybe we have, we'll re remember, maybe during the, the rest of the recording. Uh, we should probably run it for the order for the drivers we haven't mentioned yet. Um, in the end, Lana could overtake uh, Leclerc for, well, not overtake, but. <laughs> cruised by as Leclerc almost crashed at the exit of the last turn. It was a horror moment, but luckily Leclerc caught it uh, just in time. He was like so close to the barrier with the rear left tire. It was like centimeters, if not millimeters. So uh, close call there, but luckily Leclerc um, actually managed to carry on and get, get the fastest lap in the end. So no points there either. I'm going to quickly mention the two points I got from qualifying. Um, good job, me. Unfortunately, <laughs> I swapped the I swapped I swapped the Ferrari, so I didn't get four, but I mean two is still better than zero. And you get a point for George Russell for the Grand Prix. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I think you still got the uh, at least one point of in the remaining category. So yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, P three Charles Leclerc with the fastest lap. Uh, P four in the end was uh lewis hamilton uh quite a good bounce back on on austin uh a p4 in the mercedes uh yeah a lot of ha a lot of uh, a lot of things happened uh, around him uh especially to george and max but still finishing p4 is a good yeah it, yeah it's the slowest car out of the, out of the top four um uh, undoubtedly but yeah uh Nothing really much to do for him, uh, where he qualified already. Um, B4 is as good as it gets with the Mercedes. So, good job, Lewis. Uh, P5, George, unfortunately, with the damage. But, yeah, I mean, maybe he could have been a little bit safer, but also he raced uh, uh, cars which were racing each other at that point. So, it was a uh, very uncomfortable for him, definitely. Uh, just the best call from Mercedes to put him in traffic after a spit stop. Um, didn't lose points as a team, but lost Russell uh, points, uh, especially compared to Hamilton, who still had it in championship somehow. <laughs> uh, crazy, but yeah, um, that's how it is at right now. Um, P6, uh, Max, with the 20 second penalty, he dropped near the Perez levels. Uh, obviously, with the uh, with those stops to go uh, compared to drivers around him, he could match to um, still get to P six on pure pace because he didn't really have to overtake many cars, especially uh, uh, because uh, all of the cars around him had to uh, do their pit stops. Uh, he overtook like uh, Williamses and Saubers, and those are not not the match for for uh, Max there, <laughs> obviously. Uh, yeah, P7. The, the, the top two most impressive driver, I gotta say. Um, Kevin Magnussen qualified P7, finished the race in P7, almost caught Max in the end. <laughs> Ridiculously good. I think uh, I think this was one of the... Yeah. I think it was one of his best races in his career. I can lie. Uh, I cannot lie, just... Wow, uh, good, great for Magnussen. Uh, unfortunately, it's his uh, fifth to last weekend in Formula One. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's gonna be sad to to not have K Mag on the grid, but he also didn't show up for majority of uh, of the last two seasons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like he he went he went out. Yeah, you know, he went out with a bang. So that's great for him. Um, yeah, yeah, he's actually beaten Holkerberg in the last two Grand Prix. So, uh, like over the over the weekend, like it's not an easy feat to beat Holkerberg, uh, who's been beating you for one and a half seasons already. Um, yeah, I was very impressed with Hackerson overall. Uh, P8, uh, Piastri, 
okay recovery probably should have finished arguably in p6 um i think norris would have finished in p6 if it wasn't uh if it, if it was him starting from the back but i mean wasn't the oscar's best weekend overall throughout those weekends where he just is off the pace and he still has these weekends where he isn't there and that's that's the problem i think his consistency is the problem his raw pace is there just didn't manage to to have it there in, the, in this weekend um yeah polkaberg p9 uh great drive from him uh but also was beaten by magnus in both sessions so um, yeah probably not it wasn't that great of a drive uh when i think about it but still points for a team points for a whole who's still a beat and in the standings probably gonna stay there uh unless stroll um i guess a good weekend in but that's very unlikely as well p10 uh last points bank position for pierre gasly uh one point for alpine closing in for uh, on williams in the championship but still uh, probably not gonna overtake them um mm, but you know, uh, it changes every single weekend. Uh, I think Alpine and uh, and uh, and Williams could be an interesting fight going for the last four races. I think uh, Haas is not going to be overtaking by Toro Rosso at this point. They're in the points every single race, pretty much. Uh, so yeah. Um, okay. Uh, from the non-scorers, uh, P11 was uh, Alonso. No, 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 it DNF, sorry. Uh, I don't remember who was P11, but I think P12 was Franco, P13 Lawson, and uh, yeah, just those drivers at the end. Uh, Perez obviously finishing last of anyone uh, thanks to his pit stop attempt for the fastest lap. I think that, <laughs> that was a funny comparison of those graphics. Uh, Charles Leclerc got told. Yeah, box for the fastest lap and press uh, box for the fastest lap attempt. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of funny, yeah. Uh, especially knowing the result, uh, Perez, Perez's fastest lap was a uh, whole second slower than Charles Leclerc's. To be fair, Perez had damage, but also, I mean, one second, that's not anywhere near close uh, enough. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the for the results, I think. Uh, I don't think I have it. I've forgotten anything, right? Uh, all right, let's go through the least impressive and most impressive brackets. The least impressive team. Uh, oh wait. Oh no, you're gonna get two points, not one. Uh, damn it! Uh, oh damn it! I cannot think of a team that was less impressive than Red Bull. To be fair, so. Unfortunately, like there, there wasn't a team that just didn't perform. Like you could say Tor Russo, but I don't expect them to be in the points every single weekend. So I guess the Red Bull takes it this time. Uh, Has definitely not. He would probably uh, the most impressive team once again. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's it's a weird pattern because yeah, early in the season, whenever I picked Has or Hulkenberg, they had a really bad weekend. This time, uh, sorry, uh, whenever I picked them for the most impressive day, it had a really bad weekend and the opposite. And this time it happened again. Maybe I'm cursed or I, I, I don't know. I just, I'll just be, keep picking them as long as they, I, I don't get points for it. Because, uh, you know, it's a win-win situation. I, I get a point if they're a least impressive team. If they're not, I'm still happy because it has the most impressive team. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, okay. <laughs> Most impressive, sorry, at least impressive driver. I think there are two options, Science and Magnuson. I don't think anyone comes anywhere near them two. I don't think we have to choose between the two as because we not, none of us picked uh, any of them. So I think they can, they can get it tied. I think both of them should, should don't definitely deserve it. <laughs> that's true that's true uh sorry uh yeah at least impressive uh okay uh it's been a long week <laughs> yeah back to the topic least impressive driver i think this this one uh i think you take this one as well uh press 
that they were drivers with a bad weekend by Perez. They didn't have a single single thing that would get him above the least impressive line because yeah, Perez's weekends are normally really bad, but this one was well the type that yeah, it was it was over the limit of bad. It was like a horrible, catastrophic weekend, especially on his home race. Uh, I think this this one is a straightforward point for you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, gonna overtake me. Uh, sorry, don't no, no, overtake me. Outscore me this weekend as well. Because mm. well, most impressive team has maybe Ferrari. Uh, depends on how you look at it. I, I mean, Ferrari had a worse weekend than last than the last one. <laughs> like, yeah. They they got a one two last time. They didn't get it this time. I think Haas takes it. Um, I mean, they almost called Max in the end with Magnussen. That's already the highlight in itself. <laughs> Most impressive driver. Okay, that, that's the one I was talking about. Science Magnussen. I think both of them uh, deserve it equally. Because. If we would both uh, have, like, if one of us had Magnuson and the other had Science, I think both of the both of us could get points. All right, and the last one is the actual prediction that I mentioned already. Mine is not correct, and yours, and unfortunately, not as well. I call Pinto go down in Q one, um, and. I'll be going to Q three, but that's double Q three for Williams for a prediction, and that didn't happen. Uh, I still have. A... Yeah, Akola Pinto, to be fair, finished still in P12. He has never finished below P12 in his entire Formula 1 career. <laughs> uh, I think that's a crazy stat. I, I, I hope it continues because uh, Franco is definitely putting pressure on the teams for uh, at least 1.6, uh, 20.5, maybe for Sauber, but it's complicated there. Um, anyways, uh, you outscored me this weekend once again, uh, three to two. So congrats. Um, this uh, it's pretty. When you think about it, if I would have Ferrari switched, I would get four. It's because I, I, it does pain me so much because I know how that I had Ferrari won four predicted but in the wrong order I get zero points for that it's so unfortunate uh, also P2 and P3 in the race those two switched uh, in the in the last part of the Grand Prix uh, towards the end as well with Norris overtaking oh, or I said not, not quite an over an overtake more of a uh, passing by but yeah uh, if Leclerc maybe could have defended that position would have given you a point and uh two for myself so also lost points there but anyways uh i think we're down for this race it was a uh, pretty good for um, the for this track specifically um not quite a big fan of it but it delivered this time uh so yeah happy with that um your last thoughts Yeah, we're getting to my another top three track on the calendar. <laughs> uh, after we had one last last weekend, um, obviously the weekend before this Mexican Grand Prix. Uh, I don't know how to specify. It. Um, yeah, that's it for this recording. Thank you, everyone who's been watching or listening to us. Uh, we'll see you next time. See ya. Yeah, uh, AJ. <laughs>